I'm working on this 1961 wheel horse, model 401. In the last video, I got the engine running. That looks pretty good. Now I need to clean the engine. I'll be taking the sheet metal off so I can get to the fins, but not much more. I'm going to work on the throttle and choke cables first, because I want to get some lube in there, and I might need to soak them for a while. I'm just going to pick one here. They'll both get the same treatment. The first thing I want to do is straighten out the tight bends a little. Not trying to make it straight, but I want consistent and smooth curves. This is not a factory made plastic coated cable. It looks like some type of tubing slid over there. And each end has a wire crimped around it to keep the tubing in place. This one's harder to move. There's a damaged spot down here towards the end. When you move the cable, you can see the bent spot moving inside of the jacket. So that's where you need to straighten the inner wire. It still wiggles a little bit, but it's better than it was. First I'll spray WD-40 in them and work them back and forth. I like doing it vertically so the fluid can run down in the cable. If I clamp the tip in a vise, I can pull on the end and stretch it a little straighter. Then I'm moving the outside jacket, not the cable. This throttle cable has a twist to lock feature. That works okay. I decided not to soak them, but I'm going to hang them up and put WD-40 in the end. So hopefully some of that will run down into the cables. Okay, time to start on the engine. I'm going to take all the sheet metal off. This screen is all bent up. I'm going to have to take the starter cup off to fix that.
There's a lot of dirt collected on these flywheel fins, so I'm going to get that out of there. I need to get this blown out muffler off of here. Looks like somebody already had a pipe wrench on it. I'm gonna hold the elbow in a vise and give it a try. First I'm gonna drain the oil so I can lay the engine on its side. And I'll put some liquid wrench in there. It'll soak a while while I go mow some grass. I'm using the vise so I don't leave pipe wrench marks on the elbow. Some gas came out of the carburetor too. Got that cleaned up. I have bigger pipe wrenches, but they don't fit between the elbow and the muffler. Well, I don't like this setup. Not much room for the wrench, and the elbow's not gripped good enough. This should work better. The vise has a better grip on the elbow, and the pipe wrench fits in there. Okay, the pipe wrench is slipping on the outside of the pipe, so I need to try something different. I'm ready to try something different. I'm going to cut the pipe close to the elbow, and then work on getting the rest of it out of there. It's usually handy to have my vise on wheels, but in this case I don't want it moving around, so I'm going to block it up. And that should work. The plan is to cut a section out of the pipe and squeeze it together to get it out of the elbow. I want to stop cutting before I get to the threads and use a chisel to break the pipe where I cut it. Here's a look at the section I plan on taking out. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. I was wanting to chisel the piece out of there. 
That means I cut down too deep and got into the threads. I got a good section of the pipe out, but you can see where I cut through the threads. You don't want to do that. Next time I'll stop and try the chisel sooner. Now I want to shake all the particles out. Don't use an air hose. If the exhaust valve happens to be open, you might get some junk on the valve seat. Uh, that's not really a problem until the valve closes. Here's a look at the saw cuts. It was a mistake, but I'm not going to do anything about it. The worst thing that can happen is it'll have a small exhaust leak. This old muffler had a 2 inch nipple, but all I have around here is a 3 inch nipple, so I'll have to get the right one later. I'm not going to throw away this old muffler. I might want to use the back section. What you can do is use the front section from a new muffler like this one and use an old back section with the tapered shape and make a muffler that looks close to an original. The hole pattern in the front's different, but at least it would be the right shape. I'm going to run a tap in here to make sure the threads are good. It'll take away the burrs from the saw cuts. I wonder why that won't start in there. This end starts okay. Apparently I just didn't have it straight in there. Well that should make it sound better, but it's not done until I get that shorter two inch pipe nipple. I do have another option. I've been saving this. It's in the original box. There's peanuts in there because I bought it on eBay. That was probably over 10 years ago before they were made of unobtainium. I'm not sure if I want to use it on this tractor or not. I'm still thinking about it. That looks pretty good. With a two inch nipple it would look even better. Next I'm going to work on this screen. There should be a flange around this inner hole. So I'll get some of that in position. The next thing is to try to get the flat part flat again.
this inner flange should grip the starter cup. I want the hole a little smaller than the cup, so when you push the cup into the hole, it'll stay in place. I can use the cup to help make the shape round again. Then that lip has to taper inward to grip the cup. That's pretty close. I'm going to go with that. The next thing on the list is the kill button didn't work. I'm going to look in there and see what's up. It looks like the spring in there would touch the screw okay, but it's all rusty and dirty. That might keep it from working. I'm going to use this pick with the bent end to get behind the spring and get it out. Yeah, that's pretty rusty. I'm going to use the wire wheel on it. It looks a lot cleaner, but it feels sticky. I'm going to use some carburetor cleaner on it. There's some junk down in here, and it feels a little sticky too. That's better. I think that'll work. The spring has to go in so it arches toward the button. You can rotate it in for in, but you can't put it in upside down. Start one end under that ledge in there. And then push the other end until it latches over the other ledge. That looks like it should work. I'm putting it back together. This wire goes to the kill switch on the tractor. I didn't test that yet. This is not the original starter cup. Normally there's a tang on the back to engage with this feature cast into the flywheel. I'll probably change the recoil starter later, so I'll put this one on like it was. It'll work okay, just because the direction of starter rotation will try to tighten the nut, not loosen it. They had this lock washer on there. It's not original, but that's okay. I'll use a pipe wrench on the pulley again to tighten this.
you can move this screen around but that's normal it should be seated against the flywheel as long as it grips the starter cup well enough to keep it in place that's all it needs you can tell it's the next morning with the sun shining in the garage door the next thing to do is get the sheet metal back on the starter housing's good, but there's a lot of rust on the inside, so I need to clean that up. This blue top cover was on there. I think I'll use this red one instead. You can see on the back where it was originally Kohler blue color but it was painted red at one time so I'll use that one because the old blue one just didn't look right the air cleaner cover should clean up nicely this old pre-cleaner is starting to fall apart so I'll get rid of that the air cleaner elements good so I'll use that Well, this video is getting long and I'm late getting it published. I had a lot going on the last few weeks. So that's as far as I'm going this time. Next time I'll get the sheet metal back on and see about putting the engine back in the tractor. Alright, that's it.